Ubisoft have done it. This is peak gaming. I've decided to name him Teddy. <laughs> but wait, Andrew, you're a Star Wars YouTuber. You know nothing about Assassin's Creed, right? Wrong. I want to be honest with all of you. I really like Assassin's Creed, but I have not played an Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed Revelations in 2011. Some of you were probably not even born then. Where were you kids in 2011? But that said, I've largely kept up with Assassin's Creed over the years through YouTube, watching as the franchise evolved into what it is today. So when Ubisoft asked me to come check out the new Assassin's Creed Shadows at a special event in LA, I just couldn't say no. Huge thanks to them for the invite. And yes, I normally make Star Wars videos, but as you might know, George Lucas was heavily influenced by the Japanese samurai films of Akira Kurosawa. My favorite of all time is really Seven Samurai. It's really his visual style to me that is so strong and unique. So with the new Assassin's Creed being set in Japan around the year 1579, I couldn't wait to check this out. Especially considering Assassin's Creed Shadows is doing a bunch of things Assassin's Creed games have never done before. The new seasonal weather system, which impacts gameplay. New weapons, which are some of the most brutal to ever be included in an Assassin's Creed game. And the greatest mechanic ever added to any video game ever. Teddy, my new pet. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> now, I was honestly really skeptical about an Assassin's Creed samurai themed game, especially considering that recently we had one of the best samurai themed games ever made in Ghost of Tsushima. And so many people have already started making the comparisons between the two. Samurai themed games seem to be kind of trendy right now. So going into this Ubisoft event, I was trepidatious. But within just the first few minutes of watching gameplay, it was so clear just how different this is from other samurai games. And it definitely has Assassin's Creed at its core. And a lot of this has to do with Assassin's Creed Shadow's dual protagonists. For almost every battle or scenario, the game gives you the option to play as either Nawe for stealth-based assassin-style ninja gameplay, or Yasuke, the brute force direct route, which I personally will be taking 95% of the time. In Shadows, both Nawe and Yasuke are a part of the story and can be interchanged based on each battle scenario and mission. So at the Assassin's Creed event, we got a behind the scenes look at the same mission on three separate different playthroughs. The devs played through the same part of the game three separate times to show how you're offered so many different options in approaching a conflict. The objective here is to assassinate Lord Hayashi in Fukuchiyama Castle. First, we watched a playthrough as Yasuke, walking right through the front entrance with no stealth involved at all. And then a playthrough as Nawe, using only stealth and going undetected. And then another as Nawe, but this time without the use of stealth. <laughs> the devs have given so much agency to players here in how you'd like to play Shadows. Just stepping between different shadows. I also reckon this is some of the best looking combat in years for an Assassin's Creed game, and undoubtedly some of the most brutal. This is the Kanabo, a club style weapon used in Feudal Japan, and I personally think it's one of the most brutal to ever feature in an Assassin's Creed game. You can only use this as Yasuke, and I guess it's kind of a high risk, high reward style weapon, timing your dodges and parries just right to strike with a baseball swing that will take the head off your enemy. <laughs> I also love how it becomes more bloodstained the more you use it. Another new mechanic is the fact you can have two weapons equipped at any one time and switch between the mid-combat to adapt your playstyle. So in the gameplay I saw, Yasuke has the Kanabo, Katana, and also the option to swap one of these out for the Arkabus or Teppo, which is a rifle from this era. Nawe plays as more of a shinobi ninja style character, so she uses a Katana with a reverse grip. A classic Assassin's Creed hidden blade for assassinations. She also has throwable kunai, which I have one of here. I was gifted this at the event by an actual blacksmith. Pretty sweet. It's actually a bottle opener. And a new weapon called the Kusarigama, which also doubles as a grappling hook for getting around the environment, but can also be used for aerial assassinations, and I also find incredibly useful for cutting down bamboo. Now, before we get on to world design and the open world, I just want to talk a bit more about Yasuke and the characters. I really like that Yasuke is based on a real person, an African who was living in Japan during the 1850s, who was most likely born in Mozambique, taken by the Portuguese as a child slave, raised and trained as a warrior, and eventually came to Japan in the service of Jesuit missionaries. There's a lot of mystery surrounding the actual identity of Yasuke, which is where Ubisoft have taken fictional liberties with his story, and apparently in the game he has other reasons for coming to Japan. Maybe he just wanted to see the cherry blossom trees. So based on what I've seen, what really sets Assassin's Creed Shadows apart from other Assassin's
Assassin's Creed games is the evolution of seasons, landscapes, the environment, the weather system, and how dynamic it's supposed to be. The open world and recreation of feudal era Japan honestly looks gorgeous. Everything from the dense forests to the castles, villages, waterfalls, and towns to the cherry blossom trees changing with the seasons and only flowering for a couple of in-game months. This game looks and feels alive. Ubisoft Quebec look like they've truly crafted a living, breathing open world with shadows. And these seasonal changes are also supposed to have a huge impact on gameplay and how you're able to traverse the world and approach specific situations. For example, in the winter, ponds will be frozen over, but in warmer months, you'll be able to stealthily swim your way through and breathe underwater using a bamboo straw. Another example is heavy rain, which can be used as a camouflage, making it harder for enemies to to spot your presence. But there are also more ways of interacting with the environment than ever before. Yasuke can charge his way through doors for a dramatic entrance. While Nawe can't do this, she can perform assassinations through shoji screens and doors. Now we can also use her grappling hook to stealthily climb around and can additionally extinguish lights so that she more easily blends into the shadows. Mm. But I think it's the organic environmental destruction that's even more impressive here. I mentioned the bamboo being cut down before. That's only one example. If you pay close attention, boxes of fruit will also make a mess if knocked over. Baskets and other random objects lying around the world are destructible. It looks like there are so many objects just littered around the streets to be destroyed. Even just the tree leaves being rustled as you make an impact. Not to mention the blood stains. Ah oh yes, I love a good blood stain. Just look at some of the blood that's scattered like paint on the ground as you fight with the katana. Beautiful brutality. <laughs> For me, destructible elements in video games make them more realistic and Shadows looks like it's really nailing that. But to add to this, the open world looks alive with NPCs and wildlife. And Teddy, my new favorite character in any video game ever. Not only are there adorable dogs you can pat, you'll notice the Japanese makake monkeys as Yasuke rides into town. As he rides through the Fukuchiyama town gate, we see villagers working the fields, birds flying overhead. There are puddles that are formed from the light rain, creating mud. Then as he makes his way off the horse, both villagers and soldiers bow to Yasuke as he walks through the town. There's definitely some jank with the villagers, but this is an early work in progress build. Regardless, we've stepped right into feudal era Japan. We also see corruption at play with division among the people and townspeople being mistreated and abused in the streets. And this will likely change after the village is liberated. I think it will also be interesting to see how villages and towns like this change and evolve throughout the seasons with townspeople and NPCs performing different tasks at different times of year. Can't grow anything if the fields are covered in snow, can you? So Ubisoft have really gone all out here with creating a Japanese style samurai game. But how does this fit into the greater Assassin's Creed franchise and story? The Assassin's Creed identity is constantly evolving and we're seeing that again here. Here we're seeing a fresh take on stealth, world traversal, platforming, combat, and RPG elements introduced in some of the series more recent titles. I guess you could say Nawe's character feels more traditional Assassin's Creed with her stealth, platforming, and and hidden blade abilities, whereas Yasuke is closer to more recent iterations with a heavier focus on direct brute force combat. My kind of game. Regardless, the goal here is clearly to make the ultimate samurai fantasy. It's still early days and we still need to see more, but what we've seen so far looks really promising, especially the part where you become best friends with Teddy. Shadows is set to release on November 15th, 2024. What do you think of the game? Are you gonna play it? Let me know. Huge thanks to Ubisoft for inviting me to the event in LA. And while there, I also got to play Star Wars Outlaws early. So if you wanna see what I had to say about the new Star Wars game from Massive Entertainment, then you can watch this video here. And if you wanna see more from the Ubisoft events and behind the scenes stuff, come follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon.